हेलो दोस्तों नमस्कार वेलकम टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल बाजीराव आई एस अकेडमी टूडे इज फिफ्टीन सेप्टेम्बर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डेली हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस सो लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यूज द फर्स्ट न्यूज इज वेरी मच इंटरेस्टिंग यू विल ऑब्जर्व वाई आई हैड चूज इन दिस टॉपिक इट इज बिकॉज वेन दिस मूवी रिलीज इन टू द थिएटर ऑन दैट डे इट सेल्फ that movie the pirated version started to circulate into the internet into the social media so that raises the issue of piracy and when we talk about piracy what does it means it means like unauthorized use of another's production invention or conception suppose you created some movie and if that movie without your permission get circulated into the social media that means your invention your creativity got compromised that's why to protect the content to protect the innovation there is a various laws which governs which related to the piracy so in india we do have the piracy and anti piracy laws so with respect to this movie we will discuss about the piracy laws in india and also it is very very common in india that we see violation of such content such intellectual property and in fact when we talk about index about intellectual property rights then india comes in the very much top list of violation of privacy so we will discuss some of the basic concepts and it has very much negative impact on the creative industry like cinema television publishing music and gaming because this affects the innovation this affects the economy as well and various developed nations also criticize india on this respect as well you may hear the news of criticism in various newspapers and digital content but why this sudden rise of piracy it is all because digital piracy is becoming common because of the social media and the penetration of internet all over the nation that is the point so when we talk about the legal provisions what are the legal provisions that deals with piracy the first one is your copyright act 1957 although this act came into 1957 but was amended modified in different times because of the need and the changes in the context so this copyright laws was revised in 2012 you can see to cover various forms of digital infringement within its scope and also when we talk about some of the legal provisions then section 65a of the copyright act of 1957 if there is a infringement of the copyright then it is an punishable offense for a term not exceeding 1 year and also there is another act like information technology act and section 66 also punishes in case there is a infringement of the copyright or the content and now the latest discussion is about cinematograph amendment bill 2023 which is being released into the lok sabha and that also aims to strengthen anti piracy steps so you should focus what are the provisions legal provisions that deals with piracy that's why i have given you some of the idea in the background so that you can understand you can know the basic meaning of piracy and that will definitely help because there is a important syllabus in the upsc mains in the gs paper 3 so you can link with that as well so if you are liking our initiative please do like subscribe and promote our channel to your friend circle and we have an upcoming course of yearly full term course and you can subscribe to that you can contact with the given numbers you can see here so now we have discussed the basic idea we will discuss more on the in tutorial discussion today we have to focus on two editorial discussion and i can say 
this editorial discussion is also very very important for the examination point of view because that covers the rela related context that covers bigger topic into the examination so the first article it is related to the un c meeting united nation framework on climate change and that meeting is going to held in 2023 november to december and one of the important point that will be raised here like tripling the renewable energy target by 2030 so what should be done and where the current situation lies in case of the renewable energy we will discuss about that and also the second article deals with the scientific research in india as you all know when we talk about the scientific research then india is very much back in terms of expenditure in terms of the research paper got published into the journal and also there are very other issues that we will discuss so before starting our discussion you should attempt the mains question that was asked in the upsc earlier access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy is the sign qua known to achieve sustainable development goals comment on the progress made in india in this regard and you can get certain points in the editorial discussion of today so friends starting our editorial discussion with the first article that will be covered under gs paper 2 so when we talk about unfccc we need to understand about the basics what do you mean by unfccc it is basically the united nation framework convention on climate change and this framework was the outcome of the conference of the united nation conference on environment and development that is famously known as earth summit which was held in rio de janeiro which is located in brazil and it was in 1992 and by this conference your unfccc and uncbd convention on biodiversity and unccd united nation convention to combat desertification all these framework came so you should know the basics about the unfccc and the conference on environment and development that is your earth summit that's why i discuss the basics because yahan se upsc kafi jada sawal puchti hai the headquarter is located in the bonn bonn is in germany basically and there are total 197 party and what is the objective of this conference or the convention basically jo greenhouse gas kafi tezi se atmosphere mein badh rahe hain usko control karna usko stabilize karna so that global warming ko akar hone se roka ja sake and originally when this convention came there was no binding limits to curb the greenhouse gas emissions but as the conference proceeded like conference of parties one conference of parties two conference of parties three then there was an binding agreement that we call as kyoto protocol and that set some limit to the developed countries to curb the greenhouse gas emission so we will discuss also some of the protocols that was camp because of this convention so you should remember about the Kyoto protocol which was negotiated under this framework in 1997 and when we talk about conference of parties these are the supreme governing body of this un c convention and we have a climate tech center network which is operational arm of the UNFCCC and it promotes transfer of technology for low carbon and carbon resilient development why the technology transfer is important because without technology transfer the developing countries the underdeveloped country will not able to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions as compared to the developed countries which have very much technology so you can see the logo here of united nation framework convention on climate change as well okay so we should understand about the various conference of parties and the agreement that came so first of all the very important agreement is about the kyoto protocol whenever we talk about protocol it means the binding agreement okay 
so cop cop 3 that is conference of party 3 which was held in 1997 in the city of kyoto which was in japan they adopted kyoto protocol which is legally binding and then we have the cop 7 matlab cop 3 cop 4 cop 5 this all conference held on yearly basis but here we are talking about the important conferences and the important outcome when we talk about cop 7 then we have the marcus accord and then in india also there was the cop 18 cop 8 meeting which was in 2002 and we have a delhi declaration that focuses on developmental needs of the poorest countries technology transfer for climate change and we have the cop 15 cop 14 cop 13 this series goes like that okay so one of the important major conference was your cop 21 you can see here why this major important conference because in this conference of parties the paris climate agreement came into being and when we talk about paris climate agreement one of the major target is to limit the rise of temperature by 2 degree celsius so that we can combat the global warming the target is given here and the target should be based on pre industrial times and also 100 billion dollar funding pledge was occurred here as a decision by rich country to be given to the developing countries who faces the crisis so that technology transfer and uh, renewable energy technology should be promoted by this fund but actually this is itself a saying but the fund has never been mobilized into reality this is the biggest failure of the conference and the place which taken by the developed nations so this is the point so also in 2022 there was the latest conference of party which was happened in saramel sek egypt now after 2022 we have the 2023 conference of party that will held where that will held in dubai okay you can see here so one of the important point that the leaders will focus on it is like an agreement on a global target of tripling renewable energy capacity from the current level by 2030 why nations are focusing on renewable energy it is all because to combat the rise of global warming due to the climate change or in simple term due to the anthropogenic climate change or the man made climate change so that's why we are focusing on renewable energy and if you talk about current status because if you will understand the current status then we will able to understand that how much this target which is going to be announced in this conference will be achieved so when we talk about the current status actually in 2021 the global installed capacity of renewable energy was 3026 gigawatt or in percentage it is about 39% of the total energy capacity from all sources energy capacity from all sources it means renewable plus non renewable as well non renewable like your fossil fuels okay nuclear energy all this combined together but when we talk about total electricity generation the share of renewable energy is only 28% that means we need to increase the share of renewable energy to achieve the target which we have discussed but when we try to understand about the distribution of renewable energy then majority of the renewable energy production comes from the hydro power while the solar and the wind capacity of renewable energy it it is approx your 36% so we have to increase the share of the wind and solar energy why because already the hydro power share is very much huge and if we want to increase the hydro power share then we need time because this requires huge infrastructure built up but within this period of 2023 to 2030 there will be a shortage of time 
that's why to achieve our target we need to focus on what we need to focus on increasing the renewable energy share from which sector from solar and wind not from the hydropower okay so tripling the renewable energy capacity by 2030 implies that we have to achieve the target of 9000 gigawatt because current capacity is what 3026 it will be multiplied by 3 it will be approx 9000 gigawatt and that will be achieved not from the hydropower but from the solar and the wind and when we talk about the capacity utilization factor of the renewable energy sector then what do you mean by capacity utilization factor it is basically the output to the potential that means like when we establish a plant of solar energy let's say the total potential of producing it is 100 gigawatt but we are able to produce only 75 gigawatt then what is the capacity utilization factor 75 percent so here the capacity utilization factor 25 percent for solar and wind combined so that's why we need to produce more and more renewable energy to achieve our target that is the basic point and also to understand about the various energy quota and the share one important point is that the need of the electricity varies from countries to countries like for the developed countries the need will be different for the developing countries the need will be different and also which country whether developing or developed requires more demand of energy right it is the developing country because developed country has achieved their threshold of development and that's why their consumption rise will be limited but in developing countries there is the scope of development industrial progress that's why in the coming times the demand of electricity consumption will be more in the developing countries as compared to the developed nation that's why to where we have to focus on the renewable energy developing countries but also we need to focus on the developed countries why we will discuss in that also and you can see from the fact that electricity consumption between 2010 and 2019 in china and india grew annually at a rate of 6.6 percent .6 and 6.3 percent 6.3 percent for india 6.6 percent for china and when we talk about the european union in fact the electricity demand actually declined why declined because there is no such rise in the demand in the european union country and also when we talk about the united states there is minimal growth of only 0.12 percent itself okay so what these developed country need to do to achieve the target of tripling the share so first of all there is a need like they have to accelerate the phase out of their fossil fuel share why because there is no rise in the consumption demand that means the share of their fossil fuel into their energy capacity that needs to be reduced from fossil fuel to the renewable energy sector that is the point and you can see currently only 21 percent of the electricity in the us and 37 percent in the european union comes from the renewable energy share that means there is a need to phase out rather than expanding the renewable energy demand consumption because the extra demand is very much limited in these developed countries but when we compare to india the extra demand will be created why because india china and other developing countries needs development over time needs industrial expansion that is the point okay so european union and usa needs to phase down fossil fuel to achieve the target and when we talk about india india will require about 717 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity to meet the additional demand and if we compare to the global target that will 
we equal to 12 percent but when we apply this concept to european union and usa their share will be only 0 0.4 percent that will be no such huge contribution to reduce the renewable energy and the fossil fuel share so that's why what the european union and usa needs to do they have to phase down their fossil fuel and they have to increase their share of renewable energy into their total energy capacity and the production then only the renewable energy capacity will enhance in these countries and we will be able to achieve the target and also the step of phase down in these countries like european union and usa will reduce the burden on developing countries to transition toward the greener and cleaner fuel and energy okay but is everything is good no why because the target which we have discussed above it is actually an outcome from the report of arena arena is your international renewable energy agency that calls for total renewable power capacity to more than triple by 2030 compared to 2022 levels okay but there is a issue what is the issue the issue of equitability why because by 2030 even 80% of the power generation capacity in sub-saharan africa is to be from the renewable energy sources but when we talk about a European Union, it will be only 70%. And in fact, by 2050, the contribution by European Union and by the Sub-Saharan Africa in the renewable energy will be same. That's why this raises the problem because in fact, the share of European Union into the renewable energy capacity should increase rather should be equitable to the sub-Saharan Africa that is the point okay so when we talk about China and India then also China and India they need to do much more to achieve the target of tripling down why because India in the COP27 uh, COP in fact uh, raised its target punch amrit target and it talked about ambitious 500 gigawatt from the renewable energy by 2030 but we have already seen that india needs to have an additional capacity of more than 700 gigawatt that means we have to raise the target and also if the entire burden is on developing countries then the enormous increase in renewable energy capacity is not possible without matching non-renewable energy capacity that means that these european countries and the developed countries also need to raise their share to achieve the target that has been discussed above and also there are constraints like resources and monetary requirement because when we have discussed the basic about unfccc and cop 21 outcome they have talked about that uh, for the developing countries 100 billion dollar to be mobilized for the developing countries but what is the issue the finances never came so that's why the technology upgradation to the developing countries what never successful that is the problem and also uh, like USA, USA talks about the targets but actually never implements. Like uh, we have understood that uh, in the Paris Climate Agreement, US withdrawn, then later joined. So that is the problem. And also, US hadn't declared any renewable energy target. So, what is the conclusion? Conclusion is that the developed country is more based on market signals. That means like uh, they are focused on increasing the renewable energy share but not via government intervention but via market intervention but developing countries like india they are more focused to increase the renewable share by government intervention that is the point so in fact if developed countries and the countries like usa if they are able to commit 
to increase their renewable energy share and to phase down the fossil fuel to achieve the tripling of the target that we have discussed then only india should consider the target of tripling global renewable energy capacity otherwise it is not good for india to have a decision on this so friends we have discussed this article in detail now shifting our focus to next editorial discussion that will be covered under gs paper 2 so when we talk about scientific community in india they had made huge contribution if i walk if i ask you a question can you name some of the scientists which has contributed use to our scientific developments you can comment into the comment section okay so when we talk about the scientific community and scientific research there is much more progress but there is much more to do why because even now we contribute very much to the research to the research journal as well as our expenditure on scientific development is very much less according to a data it is less than two percent of our gdp but it is more than five percent of gdp when we talk about the developed country like usa that's why the scientific development there is very much high and also lots of journal gets published into the us and also intellectual property marking also is more in the us so what is the point here we need to raise our scientific community and uh, here why i have taken this context it is all because recently council of scientific and industrial research had announced winners of shanti shwaru bhatnaga prize and this shanti shwaru bhatnaga prize is awarded annually to the scientist which is under the age of 45 with outstanding works in the field of science like biology chemistry etc okay but this prize distribution was delayed in the previous year now it has been given so when we talk about the aim behind the award and when we compare to the award given to the athletes and the players then there is a difference the award given to the athletes it is basically after winning something but when we talk about award given to the scientific community it is all because to encourage them to remain perseverance to remain patient to about their scientific work because the scientist and the research requires very much patience and the hard work to come to a conclusion and there is huge motivation required for that and also financial contribution to this sector is very much less that's why there should be the encouragement and for encouragement various awards are given to various scientists so that is the point uh, that has been raised in the article okay and uh, what is the issue and concerns you should understand the award which has been uh, announced this year it has uh, 12 winners but important point to note is that all the winners are male and uh, all the winners out of that 11 are from centrally funded institutions like iits and top institutions so what are the concerns here that the woman share into the award is very much less we need to have to improve that and also there is a need that more and more awards should be given to various researchers across the state university as well as other private university so we need to recognize as well and uh, government recently said that they will reduce the number of awards given to the scientific communities by merging different awards into the one major award that is not a good idea because instead of decreasing there is a need to have a expanding the award to the women's or to the various university whether it is a state or whether it is the private university and we can say that success of india chandrayaan 3 mission comes from what comes from our scientific community their hard work their dedication that's why we need to encourage our scientists by providing the pulse by providing them the award so that the perseverance their patience should remain 
and this would more focus toward the research and development that will help in the growth and development of our country the economic prosperity the social prosperity and the scientific development that a nation needs like india so friends we have discussed all these articles hope you understood in detail and we will meet again with the next topic of discussion for now thank you thank you very much